What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of Mar-a-Lago, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, how are you doing today? Uh, well, today was sort of a, <clears throat> excuse me, I, you know, you normally I come in very strong. I think you know this. I'm not feeling so strong today. Not feeling as strong. I mean, I'm stronger than you, but not as strong as I usually feel. Uh, because we had a, a great national tragedy happen. So, you know, we're just, uh, we're going to fight through the episode. We had a strong Patreon, perfect 10, maybe one of the strongest, I think, perfect was- 10 episodes last night. But today we're just not feeling as, uh, not feeling as powerful as normal, more powerful than most people still, but I measure myself against my own greatness, not against losers. I understand why, uh, what kind of, what, what tragedy are you talking about here? I just want to see if we're on the same page. Only, okay. I don't know why you have to see if what there's, there's, tra- I mean, and let me ask you a question on nine twelve. <laughs> okay when somebody said how are you doing i mean what what do you mean did you say what do you mean i'm not sure i'm on the same page as you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so please tell me um why are you so upset right, uh, or know, feeling not as just, powerful you know what you have the agenda we can go on if you have okay. to ask you don't even know you don't even know well sometimes you throw me a curveball mr president so no, we're I just not wanna... playing we're not playing uh uh, tennis so there's no curveballs uh you know you should know in fact what do you think it is All right, colin, colin powell passing away of covid oh. colin powell passing Who away it? who what, what are you thinking a melatonin uh one of her implants uh it was leaking this morning <laughs> You come at me, you know, and you say, you say, call it. You should have seen Mike Pence run it when he's heard you say call and he thought it was going to be colonoscopy. And this, once again, we got another flat screen TV broken because <laughs> big game Mike Pence came running in thinking he was going to see a show. Now, who's it? You're telling me somebody passed away. So, yes. okay, well, you know, that's sort of like the fair. You remember when Farrah Fawcett and Michael Jackson died on the same day? Yes. And Normally, like no, Farrah Fawcett died. Well, Fair, you know, Farrah Fawcett, by the way, wanted to date me. And she died, and it was very sad. You know, until Ivanka had the iconic nipple shot at the UN, the Farrah Fawcett nipple poster was sort of the previous number one nipple, blonde nipple poster. But now Ivanka, do you remember that UN photo? They turned the temp. I asked them to turn the temperature down to like 42 degrees at the UN. And the turkeys were done. And it was a beautiful, I was, talk about Thanksgiving. I certainly was thankful. But, uh, you know, so whoever this is, Chris, Chris Powell, that you're talking about. Uh, Colin Powell. Obvious, and him too. It's obviously sad. You know, death is always, uh, you know, sad. But it's too bad because obviously... Uh, melanoma's leaky implant, you know, sort of Michael Jackson, that story. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if it really did. Um, former Secretary of State, I think the only or the first black uh, man who's become Secretary of State. Um, right, because usually it's a black woman who'd be the secretary. So that was sort of <laughs> very gender, a lot of gender. Uh, uh, I don't know. That sounds kind of weak. And I, you know, the blacks that I know, the black men that I know, you're not going to find Kanye or Herschel Walker being a secretary. So, you know, I guess if uh, the left has their way, they want all the black, you know, under Trump, you know what black men had? Great job numbers. They didn't have to be secretaries when I was president, but under Sleepy Joe, all of a sudden, we're having a celebration for a black secretary man, a man doing secretary work. And this is progress under Sleepy Joe. What a joke. What a goddamn joke. Well, what's also scary about his passing is that he was vaccinated and also died of COVID. And he was an older gentleman, but still with 
COVID still going strong in this country and a lot of people are not taking it too seriously. Well, I just uh, heard a report. They said that he had multiple myeloma and I said, excuse me, that's my wife. Uh, I, I don't think they're talking about your wife and that. No, but do you know, excuse me, excuse mm. me. You played smart. You said, Oh, I don't know if it Michael Jackson, they were talking about, uh, um, colonoscopy, uh, Peters, and they Colin were saying Powell. he pet him to okay what I, however you want to pronounce it i'm pretty sure i know it did you say his, his pronunciation was colonoscopy peters is that was his pronunciation of his name was really excuse me <laughs> it is the thing you said to me no sir i don't think that was it i don't think he got michael jackson by uh myeloma's breast implant Every time they talked about him, they said he had COVID, <clears throat> that he was vaccinated, but then, mm -hmm. and then they interrupt it and say, he had multiple myeloma. And I said, okay, well, it's, you know, finally they, you know, they're breaking news. We're no longer talking about the black secretary. We're talking about the first lady's leaky implant. So myeloma, my wife, uh, is sort of the lead story, if you think about it. So you, you think she upstaged him, just like the Michael Jackson thing. I, I don't think that – I think you have um, some of the facts crossed up, Mr. President. Well, remind me when we bring on a fact stuff guy to ask him <laughs> about the facts. You're yeah, the tech stuff guy. Have Not you long, by the way. Have you ever met uh, Colin Powell? Have you ever uh, had any interaction with him? Colin Powell was an Irish guy who used to say the N-word a lot. I know Colin Powell. <laughs> I think we're talking about two different men. <laughs> Secretary of State? No. What's his name? <laughs> Colin Powell? Oh, Colin Powell. Well, Colin, yeah. Like I said, Colin Powell was a very racist <laughs> Irish guy, very tough. Liked him a lot. But Colin Powell was this black secretary. Have you ever met him before? Well, I'm getting intel from my people at Mar-a-Lago, and they said that he said many not so nice things about me. Mm. So hopefully he's hanging out with John McCain, having <laughs> great military uh, chats with uh, with Satan right now. It's very nasty. Very nice. You know, it was even not nicer the way he talked about his president, me. Well. I want to ask, Mr. President, do you think everyone loves you or do you think only a certain kind of person think, loves you? I think attractive women love me. I think patriots love me. I think strong people love me. I think the poorly educated love me. I think great Christians love me. <laughs> uh, but no, not a, of course not. A, I wouldn't want to be loved by everybody. Then you end up like Jimmy Fallon, you know, like sort of a weak, a nothing, just sort of going, hey, 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 buddy, hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Hey, I, who wants that? Who wants to be everybody's buddy? How stupid is that? And, you know, I don't like Stephen Colbert. He's radical left, but at least he's not trying to be everybody's. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, hey, the roots, buddy. You know, get the hell out of here, Jimmy Fallon. So I'm, no, I'm not trying to be liked by everybody. Only stupid people like to be liked by everybody. But I think I'm liked by the right people and I'm hated by losers and weak people and, and people who don't have talent. And that's okay. Why would I want to be liked by talentless, weak losers? You have a good point there. Now, some exciting um, news happened last night on the bonus episode for the Perfect Ten Patreon Patriots. We you're have not gonna, a, you're not even going to mention the death of a Secretary of State. I I did already. Oh, Colin Powell. Right. I mean, you deserve. You know. You bring I mean, up these other people. You, I don't know. You, I, and I, you were, that's not that's not proper. That's that's sort of disrespectful. Even you, if you I were, disagree, excuse me. Even if I disagreed with the guy, you should have done a better tribute. You said that he talked nasty about you, and you really had nothing to say about him. And also, you were making fun of him that he was a secretary. Uh, well, now we're having wonderful microphone issues that we had last week. <laughs> You know, remind me on my next trip to Bombay to stop by uh, the Dell factory and bomb them. We're gonna we're gonna 
when we get to Bombay, it's going to be real. They call it Mumbai. I call it Bye Bye because uh, their whole factory and all their tech support. You know, you talk about bad tech stuff, people. What the hell is wrong with this mic? We have to fix oh, that. It, it, it sounds very odd. Sir? That's better. Okay. Now we're Much back. better. Much better. Okay. See, do you see that? Do you see that? I, I threatened to turn <laughs> Bombay into bombs away and Mumbai into bye-bye. And all of a sudden, the tech stuff worked again. So How about you, that? You threatened your microphone and it got scared? Uh, it said, sir, we're going to work. And it worked. So good job, Mr. President. Uh, you were already aware of that. Thank you for confirming the good job I already knew I was doing. Can we move on from Colin Powell, or did you still want to talk about him? I don't even know who that is, so let's <laughs> move on. Uh, some exciting news on the podcast last night for the Perfect Ten um bonus episode we have a new patreon president and Wait, excuse it- me excuse me you're already jumping to the sort of second story how about the fact that i gave a powerful endorsement to a candidate nobody had ever even heard of everybody was familiar with redley with the hard r and tom fitzgerald and all these other auto and then i said i'm making an endorsement and he won in a landslide. But you didn't even mention he did. that. He, he did win in the landslide. You are correct. But you didn't even mention my endorsement. I'm sorry. Your powerful endorsement, okay, very strong endorsement of Alex's iPhone, I think can put him over the edge. And he was voted Patreon president. Tom show did do a very baller move by not accepting the voting process and only accepting presidency if he was appointed by you, um, which, which, which I thought was um, pretty awesome. But he became vice president, and you appointed him vice president, actually. So it was one close. One of the his, longest his serving vice out. presidents. One of the longest serving vice presidents. You know, Mike Pence. You know, we always said that when Mike Pence saw him, he said, uh, Tom Fitzgerald, it looks like he works out. And he's very proud that... Uh, that he's a long-serving vice president, but I wouldn't count him out. I think, I think what I've done in a sort of brilliant move is we have great confidence in Alex. I think you would agree. Alex's iPhone has proven to be loyal, talented, great ideas, sort of the total package. Always wears his shirt. Always wears his great MPGA shirt to the show. He does, but didn't you have confidence in former presidents, Tom Fitzgerald and Rudley with the heart as our well, possible with the hard and R. dog, and they all let you down? Well, no, excuse me. Tom Fitzgerald let me down, but he sort of, he's shown great strength as well. And sometimes you have to come back to prove okay. that you're great. But we can agree that Alex's iPhone has been the most consistent. We don't even talk about Rudley with the hard eye. He doesn't even show up anymore. I don't even know who he is. Nope. So he's probably hanging out on Obama's make podcasts awful again. <laughs> so, but we have confidence in Alex. And uh, I think with Tom Fitzgerald as his vice president, I think we're going to get the best out of Alex because he knows he can slip up. He knows that Tom Fitzgerald is probably the most mapega of anybody involved with the show but alex has uh proven himself to be very loyal and a lot of talent so i think we have a great a great ticket right there it is a great ticket i'm just wondering what alex's iphone has planned um as president and what initiatives he has planned um as president well, i think the one thing i have confidence in is he's going to let us know because he always had strong ideas he does very strong ideas so i'm very excited and i hopefully this will be uh the president vice president to stay for um at least two or three months you know before <laughs> before we find the new president but it was a great episode and anybody who wants to support the show especially as christmas is approaching notice i didn't say shaka Kana or kwanzaa it's called <laughs> christmas so if anybody wants to support the show and add, you know, anywhere between 20 and 50 new episodes of content that we've got in the bonus pool, 
Where do they go? Uh, they go to patreon.com slash MPGA. And there's uh, three different levels. So pick whatever level suits you. I suggest go to the $5 level, start binging, and then you're going to want more episodes. So if you go to the top level, it's about uh, two episodes a week you get. And then you're going to get movie reviews this month. The Last Duel and No Time to Die. Your president is going to go very bravely into movie theaters because we're not afraid of a little bit of popcorn coated with COVID. We're not afraid. So we're going to the movie theaters very powerfully. Melatonin's going to, you know, do what she does in the movie theater, which is dig deep into that popcorn bag and get a find a mystery Cheeto in the popcorn and you know she'll she'll do what she does and I'll report back very strongly on the movies at the end of the month also Mr. President our awesome shirts the Idaho Militia Christian Bible State Tech College shirts we have one week remaining for people to buy them you can go to mpgapod.com to buy your T-shirt. Limited release, like we said before. And um, they were shipping them one big order. So if you ordered last week, it's a four to six week for shipping. Um, but they will be closed out um, a week from tomorrow, Tuesday. So get your orders in by the evening of the 24th. Um, Mr. President. Uh, the evening of the 25th. Evening of the 25th. Okay. Evening of the well, 25th. A week from a week from today is the 25th. My apologies. I uh, Tuesday is the 26th. Okay. Well, you know, I, wrote I, the... I didn't realize. Excuse me. I didn't realize we had to bring in a calendar stuff guy. <laughs> I wrote the 25th, thinking it was the next day, but apparently I wrote the day of. So I confused myself with my notes. My apologies, Mr. President. I want to ask you about a person. Let me know what you think of him. Christopher Steele. Porn star? No, and not Danielle Steele's brother. It's the dude who was in charge of the Russia, the Russia dossier, uh, who said that you were in cahoots with Putin and he had some okay, stuff on you. First of all, we don't, we don't okay. use weak French pronunciations here. It's dossier. We say dossier. <laughs> not we dossier. Even- now, dossier is how, uh, you know, John Kerry with his French fluency would say it. We <laughs> say dossier because, honestly, fuck the French. Okay. Hairy Sorry. armpits. I'm not going to, I'm going to pronounce, first of all, you know me. I like saying the hard R. And the French, they don't even have, they're like Boston. They don't even have a hard R in their accent. You're like, they can't say the hard R. Every time you see R at the end of a word, they're like, they're <laughs> and it's like no dossier hard r disrespect the french if you if your women don't shave their armpits i'm gonna pronounce the hard r i understand well this this guy christopher Steele has a documentary on hulu coming out couldn't get netflix week do you think this guy excuse me french is, is full of shit or because, I mean, he, he just comes out when he has this documentary coming out. If you had something that can really change the world and really show that our country is extremely corrupt internationally, wouldn't you just want to come with that news and not have a documentary set up around it? Well, I hear that the documentary is called Something from Nothing, which is <laughs> exactly what he's doing. He's making he has nothing on me so he's making something out of nothing and i think you should sue him because i believe that's the name of well somebody in the tech stuff group but they <laughs> has a comedy special called something from nothing and i think uh you should join my lawsuit against christopher Steele. we can do a powerful lawsuit sydney powell is uh filing the lawsuit at the uh burger uh, the excuse me the mcdonald's playpen <laughs> in the food She's court right- She's well. No, it's not a food court. It's in. It's there's a, a very nice one in. The, it's called Riverdale. It's mm. a neighborhood in the Bronx near a golf course that I have, and they have a big playpen. And she's right there, uh, serving a subpoena on the Hamburglar, and she's also demanding a lawsuit against Christopher Steele. So you should join that lawsuit. I think. 
So uh, this documentary, whatever information is in it, it's on not... Hulu. I don't even know if anybody knows what Hulu is. You know, <laughs> you know, you know what? When somebody says it's on Hulu, I say, "What do you say?" Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. So I guess you're not nervous about this documentary, and you don't think there's anything that can really take you down in it. No, if it was on Disney Plus, I'd be nervous because they're doing very strongly on the streaming. But uh, no, Hulu, uh, it'll be buried between, you know, Handmaid's Tale and, you know, some Broad City episode. Well, I wanted to ask you about this. You recently filed a lawsuit against the January 6th committee um, about not releasing... uh, white house records and that you said they're secret white house records and as former president you should have the power to keep those secret um are you hiding something you're just making a point that you know anything business by the president should be kept private it's called the presidency and it's called executive privilege okay which is even stronger than white privilege (laughs) and i was a white president so i have the most privilege obama doesn't even have as Obama had black president privilege, which is, of course, not as good as white president privilege. So I'm exercising white president privilege and uh, white executive, excuse me, white executive privilege. And the court has to obey it. They have to obey it or we don't even have a country. Tech stuff. We don't even have a country if they don't obey me. Uh, and Sleepy Joe is claiming, oh, we, it's only for the current president. You can't, we're not protecting it. And that's because he's sleepy. Now, let's say it does come out, everything that you said on that day. Mike, they're not talking about you. Continue. If um, these records do come out, are you nervous Mike, about anything that you... they're not talking about you. <laughs> if... These records do come out. Mike, get the <laughs> fuck out of here, you big gay VP. So if these records do come out. Put your pants on, Mike. As I was saying, if these records do come out, are you are you nervous about anything that you said on that day? Oh, no, you know, excuse me. No, I was doing strong patriotism. Uh, I remember I was watching the coverage. And, you know, I was just doing patriotism. I was rooting for our great patriots. I was, you know, screaming the N word at the screen whenever some of the capital city police showed up. You know, just typical patriotic presidential duties. Uh, Melatonin. Uh, even so, you know, melatonin. I was actually sort of turned on by the January 6th. That's why I kept it going. Because, you know, melatonin is normally in like sort of a drug induced coma most mm-hmm. of the presidency. But when she saw patriots, you know, she said, you know, she's from like a backwards European country. So, like, when she sees violence, she gets turned on. She's very low, you know, she look, she's very high class looking because we paid the top dollar for that. But, you know, at her, at her heart, she's a, she's, you know, gutter european trash <laughs> you get very emotional when you speak about your wife oh it's like it's 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 very <laughs> emotional because you know she was just you know taking three businessmen at a time when i met her and you know not too happy with that and i gave her uh, great surgeries and great wealth and great material things and you know, but she came to this country and she was homesick. So she just, you know, took sleeping pills and sort of just, you know, like Michelle, she was sort of like a hotter version of Michelle Pfeiffer and Scarface. And, okay. but when she, you know, it awoke in the, the gutter European trash in her when she saw all those bearded racist patriots just storming the Capitol, she got turned on. And, you know, I had to ask uh, Don Jr. and, and melatonin's son, uh, a Billy, to get the hell out of the, you know, to get Barton. out of here because who? Barton. I think his name's Brendan, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I had to ask them all to leave because melatonin was so turned on. She just, 
you know, she was she she said, "Do me like dog," so that she could watch the TV while getting powerfully presidentially plowed. Oh. So I think I would have called for security sooner, but I, you know, when you know the you know the rule, happy mail order slut wife, happy life. That that's the saying. And, you know, she was just she was like actually holding on to the TV. It was almost like we were doing like an Eiffel Tower, like like it was me doing Maleficent from behind. And while she watched Patriots scream the N-word and assault police officers, <laughs> you know, in her face. That's a, a fantasy come true, I guess. So, you know, it was, it was I would have called for, you know, troops, and, but it was, it was too much fun. It was, it was, it was just, it was good family fun. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, as a little joke, you know, cause he's not my kid. I called in Barton, uh, it's, before it's, we were it's, done. It's Baron though, by the way, it's, it's not Barton. You've called oh, him. No, Barton many. no, no. Maleficent is Baron. Okay. All the drugs have made it basically <laughs> useless down there, but, uh, the, no. Okay. She, okay. So she called in Bobby and <laughs> as a little joke, because I wasn't done yet. And he's not my kid, so I don't care if he's scarred. But he saw he saw me and the January sixth peaceful protesters basically double teaming his mom when he walked back into the. Uh, uh, that's awful. Back into the uh, Oval Office. So it was. It was. Uh, that's why you know. And and as we said, I will say one thing, mm-hmm. so that some of these people who listen to the show know that we have powerful Patreon content. We announced a new Donald. You see, this is why you know it. This is why the people should at least join at the five dollar level because there's like twenty holiday episodes where we yes. discuss different traditions, and it's probably, I feel like, other than the live episode, but that's for only the the high spenders. Other than the live episodes, I honestly think that the traditions are everybody's favorite thing, and we started a first ever. Donald J. Trump tradition. Uh, we announced it because we always do the Fred Trump traditions for holidays. But on Janu- every January 6th from here on out, I will have powerful sex with a woman named Ashley <laughs> to honor the great patriot Ashley Babbitt. Every January 6th. Every January 6th. Can't wait to do <laughs> that bonus episode in January. That's going to be beautiful. Very patriotic. Now, Mr. President, I wanted to ask you um, a few things light in the news. Uh, the best thing to come out of Korea besides Kim Jong-un right now is Squid Gangnam Game. Style. And Gangnam Style. Have you seen Squid Game on Netflix? That is uh, one of the top trending shows in the country right now. Let me tell you something. I'm going to watch it, but I already have my lawyers preparing to sue squid game people and you of all people should know if you follow the show <clears throat> squid game is basically just a fred trump tradition <laughs> you know except they do power they do murder which is a lot less nice than the uh extortion sex that fred trump would do but they basically we- stole the idea that you you know you've heard the traditions a lot of the time mm-hmm. they involve uh, beautiful women with uh, poor financials who need help, and you and spare the, and you spare most of their lives. And we exactly well, some of them can you know obviously some of them commit suicide after being right. so powerfully made love to by <laughs> seventy year old Fred Trump in front of their kids or their husbands uh, to clear their debts. But Squid Game is ba- Squid Game should be called Fred Trump Game. And we're going to sue them very powerfully. <laughs> or we'll let my good friend Kim Jong-un have at them. We'll just say, you know what? If they don't pay up, why don't you take care of South Korea, Kim? Think Kim would be down with it? You don't think Kim would be? Kim wants yeah, to. Yeah, he, he, he's down for it. And any, he lost any weight. He lost weight recently, so he's ready to fight. Have you spoken to him? Uh, well, you know, he asked me if I had seen Squid Game, and he actually, because he's a respectful friend, he said to me, "Have you seen Squid Game?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Not yet, buddy, but uh, I've heard bad things." He goes, 
It remind me of strong traditions. I said, you see it, you see it too. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then I, uh, you know, I bought Dennis Rodman a first class ticket over there so I could see him. And uh, that was my, you know, but, you know, all my friends, they know. And Kim Jong-un knows that this is a title ripoff of Fred Trump traditions. It's a disgrace, really. I hear the show is good, but of course it's good. Because the, the Fred Trump traditions are great. So a copy of them is may not be great, but it's still going to be good. Um, yeah, I, uh, I watched the first and a half episodes. It's, it's okay. I think the Fred Trump traditions are better. Wouldn't that make for, if Netflix wasn't so in the pocket of the Obamas, they're missing out. Imagine that series. The mini series that all the, the Fred Trump tradition mini series featuring violence, strong sexual situations, nudity, and powerful, possibly forced lovemaking. <laughs> That's what you get with every Fred Trump tradition. It's a beautiful, patriotic <laughs> love fest. It's called a love fest. I think, I forget, was it Mother's Day? Was it the Mother's Day one where, where the, kids, the kids were present? I think that was Mother's Day. I think Mother's Day, you know, we had a great Halloween, a great uh, Thanksgiving. Great. Halloween and Thanksgiving were a couple of years ago, and those were, those were powerful. But I think Mother's Day was the one that really, I, I remember I was overwhelmed with emotion on that episode. But you know what? They want Squid Game. They want the the the, the crappy knockoff version of Fred Trump traditions. And so and enjoy it, stupid people. There's uh, some news in the Kardashian camp. They're connected. Uh, Travis Barker, you know who he is? He is the drummer from Blink-182. Uh, uh, he is engaged to Courtney Kardashian now. As, that, as long as that's not the big one with the plastic surgery, who is uh, OJ's kid, they're probably doing all right. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's uh, Chloe, I think her name is. Yeah, no, uh, Courtney's, uh, you know, this is what happens. Courtney was actually the one who I thought had a, you know, and, and by the way, Scott Disick, you know, yes, him? that's his ex. I'm going to tell you something right now, and I hope Don Jr. hears it. Scott Disick was like who I wish Don Jr. was. <laughs> so I always thought Courtney had it really put together. You know, she was cute. She had a little tasteful surgery, but she wasn't like the attention whore like the other ones. Uh, but then, uh, you know, she you know got into her 40s and obviously is having some sort of sad midlife crisis. And now she's with a a guy who basically looks like a, a punk rock white version of Lil Wayne. <laughs> yes. Um, well, as long as they're happy, that's all that matters. Uh, no, um, that's actually not all that matters. That's but, not. Uh, okay. No, Courtney could do better, but you know what? She's over 40. So who the hell cares? She's the prettiest out of all of them. Um, well, you've never seen Kim in the Oval Office begging for <laughs> blacks to be freed from prison. She looked pretty, pretty when she was doing that powerful persuasion. Oh, I'm sure she did. Um, Bible. I wanted to ask you about this last story. Your boy, Kanye. I don't know when the last time you spoke to him was. Well, I spoke to him a couple of days ago, and it's actually, uh, he's actually now known as Ye. I think it's Ye. It's actually a. Well, it's Y E. Like right. I feel like he well, branded Con himself after his so, Yeezys. Uh, Ye oh, oh, so okay. You think he named himself after the sneakers that are named after him? Okay, that's good tech stuff logic. Uh, is it Kanye? Kanye West. <laughs> Kanye. That's how. That's how Kim Jong Un says it. Kanye. <laughs> but I think you know we don't say Kanye. We say Kanye. So do you think it's yay? Well, that's, you know, what? that's what he said. I'm, I, he I might I be. Banged Kim. He said, yay. <laughs> because he knew blacks were getting out of jail. Or I thought he'd get rid of her. I, he I also got rid of her, and I think it was a good decision. I don't know. I, I'd like to hear him pronounce that, but I think it could be yay. Well, you won't hear him pronounce it because you're not close friends with him. And he told you personally it was yay? Do you call him Ye now, or do you still call him Kanye? Uh, well, you know what? 
as long as he's not doing like a gender transition, I will call him whatever name he wants. So I call him Yay. Hip hop hooray for Yay. Bars. <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, crazy man, uh, Kanye, but I think he's and got he's some se- issues. He's selling his ranch in Wyoming. I didn't even know he had a, a ranch in Wyoming. Yeah, that's where he does all his preaching and his concerts. Wow. He's got an eleven million dollar ranch. It's million with a Y. Well, maybe uh, he'll buy a place down in Mar-a-Lago, and you guys can hang out more. Well, I bet you'd like that. Get him on the podcast. That would be pretty cool. Him on the podcast. And, they, and um, with him present, you can that I can already tell you the title of the episode because he'll let me say it. <laughs> What would be the title of the episode? Just (laughs) N-word. Onward and N-word. Mr. President, thank you once again. Two days this week, one for the bonus episode, one for our regular weekly episode. Appreciate you always spending time with us. Don't forget, one week left to pick up your Idaho Militia Christian Bible State Tech College t-shirts Order them online. One week left. It's MP. AR-15 potato trumps. That's We're right. M- school. MPGAPod.com. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're there. Leave a rating and review for the podcast. And also thank you for all the listeners who have checked out my special so far. Thanks for all the tweets and uh, kind words. Appreciate it. If you haven't checked it out. You can rent it on Amazon. For all the people internationally, Vimeo has it internationally. So Australia, go to Vimeo.com. Uh, Australia fans. Yes, uh, a couple people in Australia want to listen, it. Uh, watch it. So uh, Vimeo, it's on uh, Xbox, YouTube, Google Play, Apple, um, and Amazon. So check it out. Something from nothing. I uh, really appreciate that. So please check that out. Kanye uh, just texted me and told me to tell you to secure the bag, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. President, do you have anything to uh, share for this week? Uh, we're just, you know, we're preparing for a great honoring of Ashley Babbitt. We're going to take back the White House, and that's about it. So thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's JL. Hi. Um, the usual slate of announcements. Check out Righteous PK podcast. Go to jlcomedy.com to get on that. Uh, upcoming shows. Um, New York. Can't wait to see some of you uh, at the uh, taping on Saturday. And then after, oh, but before then, uh, any New Jersey listeners, I am in Morristown, New Jersey on Thursday, 8 p.m. And then November 6th in Lee, Massachusetts in the Berkshires. Good show. Uh, Jordan Carlos, uh, part of that show, uh, our President Obama. Uh, somebody did write a review on iTunes that had said uh, Reggie Brown was Obama. Reggie Brown was the Obama in one of the videos I did, but our show, our show Obama is Jordan Carlos, just to clear that up for that one person who wrote a review like two months ago. He probably doesn't even still listen. Uh, <laughs> after that, uh, I am in Pittsburgh, December... Ninth, I am in Washington, D.C., December 16th through the 18th. Harrisburg, PA, January 7th and 8th for all our central Pennsylvania people. And then Burbank, California, February 6th. Going to fill in shows throughout there, but those are the ones that are on the calendar right now. Go to jlcomedy.com calendar page to get all that. All the tickets, buy them now, blah, blah, blah. You're already stopped listening. God help us all. <laughs>